Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the PH and Sun Devils post game show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Bet just one dollar on any NFL game this week, and if either team in that game scores a point, scores a point, you get a hundred dollars in free bets. It's just that easy this week at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. I'm joined as always by Brittany Boyer during a celebration for the fifth in a row of the Sun Devils winning the Territorial Cup. Brittany, how are we doing down there? You know what? I'm doing really good. I'm actually trying to find Tyler Johnson's Twitter handle right now because I have a great video of him after the game. That's why we're a little bit later getting going. Um, There was so much going on. You know, I'm sure if you were tuning in on the uh, Pac-12 network, you saw the guys running up and down the field after the game with the cup. When it finally got into Tyler Johnson's hands, he said, you know, five in a row. I've never lost to the Wildcats. And, you know, it was a really special moment for him and Chase Lucas. Grabbed it, looked at each other, and, like, both holding on to one side, just sprinted back down the field. So, you know, it was a pretty cool video. Wanted to tag him in that. So, yeah, you know, Shane, just to be here, to get a win in a game like this after some of the, uh, you know, the emotions that we've had this season in terms of uh, wondering if the team is or isn't going to show up, uh, it's just nice to be here. Yeah, definitely. Sun Devils get the win 38-15. to As I said, this is the fifth straight time the Sun Devils have taken the Territorial Cup. Um, U of A has not won since 2016. Oh my gosh. Pause because I just got big news because they're actually this time not playing the, um, the post game presser up here on the screen, but they're streaming it. And I just saw on Twitter, Rashad White announced that his career with ASU is over. He will not be playing in the bowl game. He came to a mutual agreement with the coaching staff. So guys, we just saw the last of Rashad White as a Sun Devil, and I am actually a little bit heartbroken considering I didn't know that or expect that. Yeah, I had a feeling that that was the case when he was still in on the last drive. Um, I think they wanted to get him over 1,000 yards on the year. I think he finished with 1,006. He finished with 98 rushing yards in this game and the touchdown on 21 carries. Uh, yeah, there's just – it's such a special thing to see him play this well on – senior night and really all season long he was so damn good for the sun devils yes. team really the, the the a one-man band of most nights uh those couple couple two or three 200 yard plus all-purpose yard games that he had for the sun devils team and um big game he had last year against u of a he's just he's such a huge part of this team and um losing him along with a lot of the other seniors that played their one of their last games if not their last game tonight um, is going to sting a little bit. You don't know where the Devils are going to go yet in terms of bowls. I would assume it's something in the Holiday Bowl region, facing a team like Miami maybe. Um, but we will see. We'll, we'll see. So the last gets- projections I had seen were saying Las Vegas or Alamo Bowl. I actually wouldn't mind Las Vegas. I think that'd be a really fun bowl game to play, and I think that you would get a really good group of people who would make the trip from here to Las Vegas, um, more so than the Alamo Bowl. Uh, and a holiday bowl is one I've seen thrown around, but not as much. So, yeah, uh, this game was a little strange from a from a stats standpoint. Um, Jane Dion was only three for eighty six yards. He also rushed for eighty six yards on that, uh, attributing to a really long touchdown that he had. Um, just an incredible runner. You can't play man to man on him if you break contain uh, because there's just no one to cover his legs uh, when he gets out of the pocket. He, I thought he was better tonight, still missing some throws, but overall he was 10 for 14, two touchdowns, uh, produced when they needed him the most. Um, Pearsall caught both of those touchdowns tonight. He had five receptions, 452 yards and two touchdowns. He is – this was the game he came into himself last year. Um, when they went down to Tucson and they put it, poured it on them 70 to 7, I mean, you really didn't see Pearsall much before that. He came to life in that game, and then I feel like this season he really was uh, one of the two most reliable receivers that ASU really had. And um, another guy who I felt like had some big catches, did a good job out there tonight. I mean, I know he had a costly penalty for headbutting a player. Um, (laughs) Curtis Hodges. And, I mean, it's one of those games where, you know, I think back to Keith Poole. There's a really, really famous picture of him in the end zone where he's like this, and he headbutts the guy. Um, it's just one of those super emotional games. I mean, I know it's one of those things you don't like to see, but to see a penalty where it's more or less um, 15 yards for something like that on sportsmanlike conduct rather than the fucking 100th false start call, I would take yeah. it. And that's just me. Uh, speaking of 100, the Sun Devils had their 100th penalty on the year tonight um, in the yes, first half. Yes, I saw that. I saw so that. that. I saw you tweeted that. Um, yeah. Uh, 
so talking about the corners, um, seniors, Chase Lucas and Jack Jones, what was that pick six like in the stadium? Describe the emotion that you felt run through the stadium and everything. It was – it was already pretty electric in here, right? Because the momentum was already behind ASU at that point. You know, it, you were pretty confident Arizona State was going to take home the win. Uh, the interception happens, and everyone just goes nuts. I think you pretty much knew that was lights out at that point. Um, you know, one of those things where they talk about the, the type of energy in somewhere that can bring you chills or move you, that was the type of energy you, walk, you felt in here. If you were a Wildcat fan in here, I guarantee you, you did not want to stay in here after that point. Yeah, definitely. A really good way to send off some of these guys. Uh, despite the the disappointing season um, before bowl games, they finished eight and four. Um, this game means the most to them and carrying along the tradition of beating the Wildcats for the fifth straight year um, really gives this team something um, to hold on. Uh, despite, as I said, the disappointing season, they can always think back about this game and some of the plays that well, were made. A hundred percent. And also, it's, it can't be taken lightly. To beat Arizona five years in a row has not been done in nearly five decades, okay? So this yep. is not like it's an easy feat. Uh, when I had talked to the players earlier in the week, what went, Lenarius Henderson was actually who I asked this question to. I asked him, um, you know, you guys have the opportunity – to win five in a row, something that hasn't been done for over four decades. What does that mean to you guys when you go out there and take the field? And he kind of just said, you know, it doesn't it doesn't just mean something for this team. It means it for that 96 uh, Rose Bowl team that um, didn't end up winning that game, but they didn't get to go undefeated. Um, some of the other teams that have been really good since then, um, the team that, uh, you know, in 2013 lost in the, the – he gave me, like, a couple different responses. But, yeah. you know, essentially just it's not just for this group. It's for all of the guys who have played for the Sun Devils before to get a win and uh, really kind of take back the state. So. Yeah, it, it's just the the emotion tied to this game. The Sun Devils could be winless right now, and if they won a game like this in the fashion that they did tonight um, – it, it means a lot. Speaking of the fashion um, that they won, they covered the spread on DraftKings Sportsbook app. At, they won by 23. The line was 20 and a half when it closed. Um, it made a lot of betters really happy, uh, not only when Jack Jones got that pick six, but also when U of A turned the ball over on downs um, after that costly penalty they had so um if you bet on arizona state to cover today congratulations you won i had a fun bet um in the first quarter after asu answered with their own touchdown after the field goal to make it seven to three about halfway through the first quarter i live bet the under at 54 and a half the game finished with 53 points so i was sweating at the end and i was really glad that the sun devils decided to just run the clock out and uh punt the ball away but if you want to make bets like that live or before the game head over to the DraftKings sportsbook app today download it and sign up using that promo code phnx you can get a hundred dollars in free bets if you place just one dollar on any nfl game and either team in that game scores a point it's just that easy the DraftKings sportsbook app it's safe it's secure it's reliable most of all it's so damn fun um if you are an asu or u of a fan you probably don't have much rooting interest in this game, but if you had some skin in the game um, in terms of betting, uh, it would have been a way more fun game to watch, especially sweating out the over-under. A couple of my friends bet on the over um, in, in the game, and that uh, the, the over before the game, which was at 53, um, and we're pretty excited when that pick six happened. Um, they pushed, obviously. Uh, the people at the, at the sportsbooks know what they're doing. Uh, to set the line exactly what, what it finished as. Um, but, yeah, download it today. Get that promo code JUICE up. Get your $100 in free bets when you play the dollar in any NFL game. Um, and either team scores a point. That's 21-plus Arizona-only gambling problem called 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. I want to bring up a comment really fast that David um, said. Um, earlier, uh, if you want to bring that up, Rhea, he said, I have a hard time deciding whether or which offensive player had the best season. Eno in 2018, Brandon Ayuk in 2019, Rashad White in 2021. I think it's close between Eno and White, but that might be recency bias. What do you think, Britt? Uh, so, it's hard for me to choose. Um, I think I got to go with White. 
I think I got to go with White because in 2019, Jaden Daniels was having a pretty decent year. Um, they weren't struggling as much with penalties. They definitely didn't have as many turnovers, and I think that was partially because of IU. But uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, he had other people, though, that were able to take some of the workload off. This year, I feel like Rashad White has had to carry the load and do everything out there. Um, and it's really, really annoying. And I feel like Eno you know, Benjamin was in a bit of the same situation when he played here. Um, and again, maybe this is my recency bias coming through, but um, I just got to say Rashad White. I think he looks a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more like more muscular of a build. Um, and I think I've seen just a little bit more in terms of what I've liked from him. I would have liked to have had another year with him, to be honest, but it is what yeah, it is. I would have liked to have another 10 years with him. I, I, I think that's the safe answer just because of how much he was able to will this team to victory a couple times. There were at um, least three games this year that – Rashad White is the only reason why Arizona State won. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's my answer. If you have any other um, answers, drop them in the comments below. So let's talk defense in this game. Territorial Cup aside, from a defensive standpoint, Will Plummer shredded the Sun Devils through the air, 346 yards and a touchdown. He was 28 for 38 from the um, uh, throwing the ball. And just a lot, a lot of – uh, slants or in routes came open down the field consistently. What did you see um, that you thought might have been going wrong for the Sun Devils team tonight on defense? Well, I think first and foremost, you have to look at how many guys did not play. Uh, Darian Butler yep. still out with a concussion. Merlin Robertson out with an undisclosed injury, at least as of this morning. They might have said what it was, but I still am not aware. Uh, Evan Fields didn't play. I think you just had so many different guys that were in there. It, there's a lot of intensity. There's a lot of emotion. Um, and I know that their focus this week was stopping the run. It was not so much on the pass game. They knew they needed to improve on stopping the run. Um, and I think they might have just underestimated Will Plummer a little bit, because I'm not going to lie. I did. I am, in my opinion, what I've seen from him this year, this is one of his best games. This is the best he looked. Um, oh, yeah. You know? So it's one of those things. But they knew they knew coming into this game that U of A was going to bring their best this year. Like I said earlier in the week, this isn't a team – like you saw last year where they quit on Kevin Sumlin, um, and that's why it was a 77 blowout. This team had grit and determination, and they wanted to uh, keep hmm. going. But uh, eventually Arizona State was able to just wear them down and get the best of them, and so it ended up working out for them. So, Well, if their game plan was to stop the run, they certainly did that. They held the U of A to only 50 rushing yards compared to ASU's 228 on the ground tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Sun Devils Damn. dominated that area. Uh, Jaden Daniels and Rashad White um, combined for over 170 rushing yards um, total on the game. Com pretty complete game from um, a, a rushing standpoint. As we mentioned, struggles on the passing game a little bit, but they didn't really try to go to it too much. As I mentioned earlier, Jaden Daniels only threw 14 passes tonight, and he really didn't need to do much more. And I'm not surprised with that. Arizona has one of the top passing defenses. So, you know, I really anticipated that they would run the ball. I think all of us wanted them to just pound the rock the whole time, no matter what. I mean, why risk throwing it um, and getting a, having a turnover? You know, tonight was a nice night. Arizona State had no turnovers in the game. I know there were a couple fumbles. They were able to fumble it out of bounds. Um, situationally, it worked out. Again, you don't want to see them have any, but at least it wasn't a turnover. So. Yeah, I like, also like to see it get a little chippy there at the end of the first half. Um, it, it's just fun to see the emotions flow through these players. Uh, the refs, I thought, did a pretty good job tonight of letting them play to some extent um, yeah. and then throwing flags only when necessary. One of my favorite celebrations in all of football is when you just chuck a ball into the stands like Jack Jones did tonight. I don't know what it is, but I audibly laughed out loud in the break room earlier when I was watching the game. It's just so funny to me to see somebody throw a football as hard as they can at a student section um, in celebration just, and flopping on the just, ground. It was awesome. He just throws a dart and just pegs yeah. a drunk bitch in the face. <laughs> it, it, it was really funny to see. Um, well, oh let's bring God. up let's bring up the lyric of the game um, okay. tonight. Lyric of the game. Come Lyric on. Of yeah. Game. Yeah. Nice. I have the, uh, I, I'm the echo. I'm the echo. Very good. Uh, our lyric of the game tonight comes from the one and only in sync. Bye bye bye. Goodbye, bye. U of A. No thank you. See you next year. Um, not or see you during basketball season. Actually, I don't want to see them during basketball season in the state. We'll see the them. Team right 
early on in basketball season. Too. Yeah, um, I almost got instinct confused with Backstreet Boys, and that would have been really bad in the comments. I don't think I Leah like. would have let you do that. Please sing. Do we? Is that something we want on the program? Do we want more singing? Because if that's something the fans want, that's something America wants. I will give that to you. I just I don't know if that's something I can do without being asked. Um, I don't I want to intrude. I've had dreams and aspirations to be a singer, but I sound like absolute like just trash. So well, you should you should you should practice, Brittany. Um, one thing I don't even that think was, singing lessons would solve my problem. I have yeah. that pitch of a voice that just can. Great the people windows. Have, the people have spoken. They want more singing. I okay. Next time for the lyric of the game, um, we do this for basketball as well. I will sing for you guys. I promise, David. I got you. Um, one 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 thing to note uh, tonight: the third down efficiency um, was. <laughs> He's a, America. He says yes. <laughs> I am America. I say yes. Um, the third down uh, and fourth down efficiency for U of A. Um, they were three for four on fourth down, some of those coming yeah. garbage time, but also um, in short yarded situations, six for 17 on third down, um, a lot of big stops for ASU on on third down. But the short yarded situations when they need a stop still doesn't work very well on the defensive end, uh, for lack of a better word. I, I, it's it's a little bit concerning, but all they have to do is with last or withstand a bowl game um, and then this can be done with. <laughs> yeah, well. I feel like we should probably address something in terms of the bowl game and what's going to happen and coaching yeah. staff situations. And uh, I've heard a little bit of an update. So apparently, what at least from what I've been told, um, Herm Edwards will be back next year. Antonio Pierce will not. Yeah. And Rob Rodriguez will be the new DC. Um, I have heard that the decision for Herm Edwards to return for one more year is based on the fact that there are already so many other coaching vacancies that they don't think anyone is going to want to come to Arizona State with the possible lingering um, NCAA violations that could drop. So they are going to keep Herm for another year. And yeah, so Arizona that's State is where coaches told. go to die. That's where I. That's what I've confirmed through two different sources. Um, and so I have a pretty good feeling that those sources are correct. But, um, I mean, hey, any anybody could be wrong. So I don't know. Well, Brett, Herm, immediate... Herm could wake up tomorrow and say, see ya, I'm out. Like, we don't know. Well, immediate reactions, Britt. If it is announced that he is coming back, what, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of ASU fans are going to be upset. But I don't think it's time for people to just be like, oh, fire Herm, whatever. I really – like, I think you need more time to develop a program – um, I mean, I feel like COVID kind of threw things off a little bit. Not that it's an excuse. You had a huge group of guys that came back this year, and they still weren't able to get the job done that they wanted to. But um, I don't necessarily think it's time to, like, just shoot him down. I mean, like you and I had both said, it seemed like there was a lot of uh, other stuff that was happening in the background that was being kept out of the light that we don't really know about um, just for the whole season. And so – you know, just taking into consideration all of the talks, I think people need to give Herm another season, see what happens next year, because I think it would only be worse if you let him go um, in terms of if it's an ugly parting of ways. Because then the recruits that you do have on board right now are going to decommit. With the early signing period, that's not a good thing. You do not want that. So I think it's in their best interest, really, realistically. And I know people are not going to like to hear this, it's in your best interest to keep Herm for another year. And honestly, I think people are going to be happy with Rob Rodriguez at defensive coordinator. Um, they really need somebody, though. My, this is what I'm a little bit confused about. I'm not sure what's going to happen in terms of this. But with Zach Hill, um, his play calling was okay. Um, he's not as bad as we've seen in years past. I know that Rob Likens is one of my absolute least favorite people ever in terms of being an offensive coordinator. Um, the screen pass made me want to bang my head into a brick wall. But they need somebody that disciplines the guys a little bit more in terms of the penalties, more specifically the offensive line. And so Coach Kavanaugh is who I'm going to point my finger at in this situation because those are his group of men that can't seem to get their shit together. Um, I I want them to do something about the false starts. So I want him to ride his guys a little bit harder. And I, 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 don't, know, I don't know if I feel like Zach Hill is the best fit, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, in terms of Herm staying, 
I think next year will be easier for him, but also more digestible for ASU fans because of the lesser expectations. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do with a team that isn't expected as much. Um, and that might just be because the, the people set their expectations too high or I thought it was, I thought the expectations were fair this year. You have to have no expectations at all. Yeah. I thought the expectations were fair this year, but it'll be interesting to see what he can get out of a lesser talented team next year. If they do decide to bring him back. Um, One thing I do want to say, which was really cool was the Soli brothers playing side by side. Yes, I I loved that. I thought Connor Soli had a really, really good game. The redshirt freshman made some really good tackles tonight. He had that one early in the first half. Um, to stop a third down um, conversion. Uh, nice wrap up, I, th- I believe, on a screen play. Um, so that was really cool to see him step up. A really impressive um, play from the linebacking core without Darian Butler or Merlin Robertson. A little bit of concern came when I heard that they both weren't going to be playing in this game. I was so nervous when I heard that. Like, I saw that this morning and I was like, uh, but after all, it, it is the University of Arizona, and they did what they do best, and that is hurt themselves. Um, holding in the end zone on the punt, uh, really costly penalties, unsportsmanlike conducts when they shouldn't have. But God damn, their kicker has a leg. Two times when they had to kick off from their own 20, he booted it to the 10 and the 5-yard line. That was ridiculous. Hey, he had to be good. Everyone relied on him because offense and defense didn't do shit. <laughs> um, the big story for this U of A team all year and specifically tonight was the red zone efficiency. My God, they can't put the ball in the end zone when they get to the red zone. And I don't think that speaks more about the ASU defense. I think that speaks more about the Arizona offense in the red zone. I mean, your quarterback threw for 346 yards. Um, they they killed ASU in um, quote unquote explosive plays, over 15 yard plays, um, and usually um, a team that has more explosive plays is more successful in the game. Um, and obviously they were not tonight. Did, did you think it was more U of A beating themselves in the red zone, or would you say it was more ASU bend don't break? Nah, ASU Ben don't break, man. There were some really really good efforts out here tonight in terms of getting past breakups. Um, Stopping the run, uh, stuffing the run, uh, try getting them. To, they, this was the first time that I've actually seen other teams have issues with the noise in Sun Devil Stadium. It was noisy in here tonight. It was a full house, and there weren't a lot of Wildcat fans. I expected there to be more up here than there were. This was the fewest I've ever seen at an ASU U of A game. So, um, I, I think it really came down to the defense, and the fans played a huge part in that tonight for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, another thing I want to talk about, um, saw Trip, Chip Trainum carry one of those drives. Um, he only finished with five carries for 37 yards. He's, if he decides to stay and not transfer or do something else, he's going to have a huge role next year alongside Daniel Angada, who didn't see the field tonight. Um, what are, are, do, do you still have faith that he can lead this team as a number one back? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to think about the fact of Chip had an ankle injury and uh hello yeah. we suffered our ankle injury at the same time and here's <laughs> mine and i had to shove dun, 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 a freaking beanie in my boot tonight to give me some extra padding dun, 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 dun. So, long story short he had an ankle injury so i'm not 100 like sure that it's all the way healed if it's still bothering him he's not going to be as uh Agile out there, he's not going to be as fast. And you want to put your best backs out there. And if he's not moving your best, obviously they're going to go with white. So um, I think that by the time next year rolls around, it should be better. He shouldn't be as banged up. But I really think that it came down to that. I think they didn't want to let people know how bad it really was early on and give people a little bit of hope he'd come back up. But I think it just didn't work out. Yeah, that definitely. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, still young, only a sophomore. So. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm trying to it. fix my beanie in my boot now. <laughs> it's all good. Um, well, the season isn't over yet. ASU still, I was going to say half has to. They get to play a bowl game. They get to play in a bowl game. It's a good thing. Um, so, and it's probably going to be a good, a good bowl game compared to years la- like in, in the past. Like the, the Sun Bowl, I'm sick of El Paso. I think hmm. everyone's sick of El Paso. Um, I, I know we've played in the Las Vegas Bowl recently, not too recently, but recently. Um, I think that that's a better game than uh, the El Paso. I mean, obviously, it's a much better game than El Paso. Yeah. But, um, I would prefer 
Las Vegas to the Holiday Bowl, to be 100% honest. Um, I don't know. I just think that it brings the energy. It brings the fans. It's a it's a it's more of a destination place, and I think more fans would be willing to make a four, honestly, three-hour and 47-minute drive from my house <laughs> to and Vegas than to it's San Vegas. Diego. It's Vegas, yeah. baby. Everybody, um, and Devils love Sin City. Let's be honest. So we mentioned how U of A outpassed ASU tonight, but they also led in another category. They had more penalties. Turnovers? 12, oh, and, wow, and they had more penalties. No but way. Not more, but not more penalty yards. They had 12 penalties for 96 yards. I didn't pay too close attention to the penalties on the screen tonight. I'm just, like, flopping this around. I didn't pay too much attention to the penalty yardage on the screen tonight, right? Really, any of the stats on the screen? Um in the day when it's super bright in here, I could not see shit. So I was like, <laughs> I can't even see what this board says. But um, later on, I just didn't really look up there. I guess I kind of felt like it was a little bit of a ugly game for both teams in terms of the penalties. So, yeah. But that is uh, nice to hear. I, I believe that they actually lead in terms of turnovers, too. They had a fumble and an interception. They had two turnovers, yep. Um, the fumble And coming. look at that. Arizona State had none. And they won. Look, when they play clean football, they win. It's when strange they don't turn how that. The ball over, they win. It's strange how that works sometimes, you know. Um, yeah, hold on to the ball, know. and you win the game. You know, I forgot about this. Jack Jones was also the person who forced that fumble, screaming off the edge after that awful, awful formation that they lined up out of and then sprinted. They confused themselves, I think. Jack Jones was able to scream off the edge. The right ta- or left tackle didn't even see him. Um, nice smack on the ball, and Tyler Johnson did a really nice job of making sure he fell on it and didn't prioritize scoring. Um, and, yeah, the Sun Devils were able to set up an easy one-yard rushing touchdown from Rashad White after that in one play. Yeah, the Sun Devils led in turnovers. Um, U of A led in time of possession, but I think that was more because what happened? So, apparently – Benches cleared and punches were thrown in an end zone fight that broke out during Oregon, Oregon State. I just got to Wow. But I wow. always love to hear stuff like that. I always get so lit when I'm like, oh, there's a fight. Yeah, poor Washington State um, will not be going to the Pac-12 championship. It's going to be a rematch of Oregon and Utah. Nobody That's going to be likes fun. Those two teams always, like, not even those two teams always facing each other. I shouldn't say that. But I am really, really tired of Oregon being the lone team in the North that ever does anything with an occasional Washington, like, hey, we don't like this year. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Washington State able to get their first Apple Cup victory um, against uh, Washington in seven years last night, um, but not enough to make it. And yeah, I, I'm really excited. Did you know that Cameron Rising can technically declare for the draft? They're saying this in the broadcast because he's three years removed from uh, from high school, which is all you need to be. You know, he's a sophomore. It's interesting. I mean, I don't think that would be the smartest move in his. Yeah, I don't think he will. But, but. I didn't know that, David. I was too. I was too, man. Yeah, I know. I like that team. I, Utah and I Oregon State are two of my favorite yeah. teams right now. Um, I don't. It's hard for me to get behind the Utah team as much in terms of like they're they've been to the Pac-12 championships. This is going to be their third time going. They've lost mm-hmm. the last two. Uh, Oregon State has been absolute like garbage, and I so mean bad. hot garbage. They were. This is the first time they're bowl eligible since 2013. That right there alone says a lot. So um, I really had gotten behind this team be, or that team, I should say, because I think what Jonathan Smith had done up there was just great. Um, so yeah, I was I was pulling for Oregon State in that game too. But you know, just kind of sitting here in terms of looking at the conference and how things shook out, and you know, I kind of touch on how many times Utah has been back to the Pac-12 championships. But it also, I feel like the Pac-12 South is a lot more of an even playing field yeah. compared to the North. Because you look at how many different teams have won throughout the years down here in terms of like Arizona State won in 2013, Arizona won in 2014, USC has won since then. Um, who else? Utah's won one of them. Um, I think Colorado took one of them. So, I mean, I feel like the Pac-12 South, it gets distributed around a lot more, whereas in the North, the only two teams that have really won it in the last 10 years are Oregon and Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one thing that you can win 
is a $60 gift card from gophnx.com. If you become an annual member right now with the Cyber Weekend sale going on, get up to yeah, 50% off. It's a great deal. Get up to 50% off merchandise from the PHNX locker uh, right now if you're a member. Um, they've been extended Sorry. through the weekend for Cyber I'm very Weekend. Distracted. They're having a pizza party on the field. Oh, look at that. I want pizza. Well, uh, comparable to a pizza party is the party that you'll be throwing yourself when your shirts come in. Um, there are some really nice ones on the new Coyotes shirt. I bought $200 worth of merchandise <laughs> on PHNX yesterday. Uh, everyone should definitely go check it out. Great sales going on right now. And become a member. Join our family. We love it. We love you. Yeah. You love yeah, us. And if, family. and if you if, if you become a member, you also get access to all of the site exclusive or member exclusive content on gophnx.com. Um stuff from Gerald Borgay from the Suns, Brittany for ASU, Mike Luke, U of A. You get all the coverage um for all Arizona sports teams. So it's just a really damn good deal in that. Uh Britt, anything else before we get on out of here? Um some final thoughts because I don't know how much football we're going to be talking relatively soon. Don't anticipate uh, a ton of high school recruits to become uh, committed in the next couple weeks. Uh, like I said before, expect Arizona State to hit the transfer portal hard. Um, anticipate a couple guys that you didn't necessarily think were going to come back to come back next year. Um, and hell, hold on because I feel like it's just going to be another fun ride in this offseason. We'll see what happens. Yep. Um, well, guys, appreciate it. Sunday will take this one 38 15 when their first or fifth straight territorial cup um, moved to eight and four on the year before bowl games. U of A falls to one and 11, one and eight in conference. ASU goes to six and three in conference. Um, pleasure as always. Uh, we will be back um, next week for uh, ASU basketball on December 1st, opening up Pac 12 play against Washington State and other live shows. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated on our Twitter at phnx underscore sun devils. You can follow me at Trandy if you can follow Brittany at lit with Brit, uh, lit with two T's. Um, if you're listening on audio, leave a nice review, five star that bitch. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe, turn your notifications on, guys. Thanks again for joining us as always. No pity for the kitty. Go Devils. Peace.